On today's episode, the future of jet engines may be, ironically, propellers. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. When the Wright brothers took to the air in 1903, their flimsy craft was driven through the air by a primitive gasoline engine spinning two propellers. Now this method of gaining thrust made obvious sense to anyone who had seen a ship's propeller, and the popular but erroneous notion that propellers drag an airplane through the air in the way that a wood screw penetrates a 2x4, well that was adequate for the fabric covered biplanes of 110 years ago. Now refinements of this basic technique still exist in smaller aircraft today, but by the end of the Second World War, turbojet engines promised unheard of speed and altitude capability for military airplanes, and civilian airliners soon followed. Propellers were eventually married to turbojet engines to create the turboprop, but for large airliners, the speed and altitude advantage of pure jets was insurmountable. In an age with few environmental concerns and $2 a barrel of crude oil, other factors simply didn't matter, but the propeller never really went away. For applications where range and payload were more important than speed and altitude, aircraft like the ubiquitous C-130 Hercules have been in production for 65 years. Today, a variation of the turboprop principle is under development as an alternative to turbofan engines for airliners, and it promises to deliver better fuel efficiency and lower emissions than current technology. CFM International, a joint venture between General Electric and Safran Aircraft Engines, has announced an agreement with Airbus to flight test a new open fan propulsion system as part of CFM's revolutionary innovation for sustainable engine, or RISE, program. The test engine will replace one inboard engine on an A380 mounted on a highly modified pylon. Rotor diameter will be 13 feet. While open rotor and unducted fan engines have been in development since the 1980s, the RISE system is substantially different. The core engine will be more compact and operate at higher pressures and will use a recuperator to recover waste energy from exhaust heat by preheating combustion air. Outside the core, the technology is also different. Although it looks like a classic contra-rotating assembly, the second stage blades are fixed, although the stators are variable pitch with active control. They act as flow recovery vanes, and with active control, they can effectively increase fan pressure ratio and control rotor loading. Like modern very high bypass turbofan engines, the rotor will be connected to the turbine through a reduction gear set. Composite materials will be used extensively, including ceramic matrix composites in the hot section. But what will be gained? Engineers are aiming at a 20% reduction in fuel consumption and, of course, a proportionate lowering of CO2 emissions, with thrust of up to 35,000 pounds, competitive with current geared turbofans. It's been about 60 years since passengers and large airliners looked out the window at spinning propellers, but a new generation of open rotors powered by gas turbines may be the answer to fuel burn and CO2 emissions issues with turbofan speed. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.